Hi everybody, it's Marty. How are you doing? Happy uh, Samhain. I um, hope you're well. We're dropping into the darkness, into the darkest of nights. I hope you're all cozy and safe tonight. Um, uh, let's see who's in the chat room. We're going to see who's in there in a second. And uh, I just wanted to get uh, the business out of the way. I have a really special, special, super duper duper guest uh, with us tonight. And that is uh, uh, Sister Kate Bornstein or Auntie Kate Bornstein to a lot of a lot of people. Uh, she's in the house, uh, American author. And she's she was on um, she was on Broadway last year. I wanted to ask her about that and um just amazing it's like so many uh she is she is one of those uh, uh icons and legends of of our of our journeys right um uh, and i'm sure you guys can um agree to that too so if you're new i wanted to um just uh, let you know my name is Marty and I'm a woman of a teen transgender transsexual whatever you want to call it however you understand it namaste to you uh experience and um, after the show is taped uh, and in the can, I will put up a card right there that will lead you to one of my stories that talks in length about my journey uh, that started when I was 15 in 1977. Um, and then I ran away over the mountains to the, to the land of Oz, which was Vancouver, BC and all that stuff, uh, you know, to find out how to do the magic eye line and stuff. You know what I mean? And... Um, yeah, I survived that, and uh, uh, that was 1977, 15, and I'm 58 now. So um, you can do the math, and uh, you can think about the decades. It was hard, and um, you do not have to. It is. It is. I, I know it's all relative, and things are still hard. But you do not have to do it alone today. Uh, suffering is uh, is optional, <laughs> and. Um, you know, for me, it's like I always say, it's like, you know, we had to go to, you know, go find some some gal on, you know, on the corner of Davy and, and Jervis and they would like apprentice, we'd be their apprentice and figure out how to do it type of thing. That's how you did it because because there wasn't LGBT centers and all that stuff back then. So um, please um, uh, use the resources in your area and in my video description down below, at the bottom there's suicide hotlines for um the united states and canada please do mi not minimize the funk that's uh, if you're going through any funks and stuff um and uh, because we all go through that stuff um, i used to call them those hormone blues and um, they can get pretty dark so please 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 call those numbers and also down below there's a 1-800 number for uh no there's a there's a direct link to the trevor project uh and uh, all half of anything I make on YouTube uh, or any super chats that you bequeath this channel uh, or tonight go go half go to uh, the Trevor Project and the other half goes to keeping my lights on so uh, uh, thank you thank you thank you for that and if you don't know about the Trevor Project check them out it's they're a great organization doing s tons for uh, transgender youth and if you are 26 and over uh, because their demographic de demographic is 26 and under um, if you're 26 and over still give them a call and say hey you know I heard about your fantastic uh, organization and um, can you lead me to something in my area you know uh, for my for my age or whatever so um, yeah please 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 check that out so yeah uh, besides that um, please like and subscribe uh, to the channel that would be really appreciated and um, and click that notification bell on because then you'll know when I'm doing uh, 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 what I'm doing if I'm doing an impromptu live or if I'm doing I do a lot of uh, SRS decades past videos because I've had my experience you know a long long time ago so things that come up that I never even like you know you thought of it's like I, I like to put document it and put it down and put it in my channel so that because um, I wish that there was stuff like this when I was a kid and um, you know, it would be it would have been so much easier to know, you know, stuff about HRT decades later or, you know, um, you know, surgeries decades later and how to maintain that and all that stuff. So um, please keep that notification bell on and you can get to some of that stuff. And I'm just going to quickly say hi to some people in the chat. Hello, Celia. 
Nice to see you, darling. Uh, how's Ottawa? It must be getting nice and cold out there. And Jessica. Hi, Jessica. Nice to see you. And Eva. Eva from New Zealand. Nice. So nice of you to visit from down under. Christy, thank you for taking care of the chat. And hello, Victor. And everybody else. Uh, oh, uh, Regina. Oh, I'm so glad you could join Regina. Nice to see you. And everybody else, thank you so much for, for spending uh, some of your Sunday with me. I really appreciate it. And so I want to I want to bring on my sister Kate right now and show her fabulousness. Here she is, Kate Bornstein. Hi, darling. Uh, hello, my love. How are you? That's a <laughs> terrible question to I, ask someone these days. I know, I know. I stepped in oh. it again. I stepped in it again. <laughs> I know it's. Let me just say, I'm very happy to be here with you. You're one of my favorite people. You are such a bright bubble in the world. We're all lucky that you're there. Oh, you. Oh, thank you, sweetie. I'm so glad that you could come on. It's like I'm. I'm blushing right now. It's like I just. I just feel uh, so happy that you're on. I feel like relieved that you're on. It's like I. I just. I. It. It, it does. It's like we, it, uh, you're just one of those people that have been. Has have been in my orbit, you know, cyber wise, and and then I got to meet you a couple years ago when you were uh, speaking at the University of Victoria on Vancouver Island, and that was the first time we were out, able to press flesh and hug and and uh, connect, and that was that was so wonderful to see it you. It was, and yeah, it really was. I really feel a connection with you. So welcome, and you're you're coming from you're coming from the East Coast. Uh, I I think a lot of people might not know where you are right now. I'm um, right now. I'm on the south coast of Rhode Island, which is the smallest state in the United States of America. And um, I'm I usually live in New York City, but it's not the safest place for me right now. I happen to fall in. I'm in the one percent. That means I'm in the, the you know, I'm in the one percent of people that if I do get COVID. It'll do me in. So I'm keeping myself relatively safe as much as I can. Good, good. Please yeah. do that. You're a treasure. We need you. <laughs> we need uh, you, darling. Yeah, my husband's in the same boat. It's like if he if if it came into the house here, it's like he'd be it would it would not be a good thing. So we're we're really in our little bubble here too on Vancouver Island and uh, doing what we what we can, you know, making the yeah. best of it for sure. So, so everybody, it's like, I just want to let the chat room know, it's like, uh, as we're talking and the, uh, this hour goes on, we're going to go for an hour and see how it goes. And, um, if you have a question for, uh, for us, it's like, put a big Q in front of your comment, or if you, uh, want me to really see it, I, you can always throw in a super chat and that lights up my screen and that's make, and I can make sure that I see it then for sure. And, and thank you for the super chats. Christy sending me one, uh, sending us oh. one already. Thank you, darling. That's so sweet. And Victor too. Uh, Victor. Oh, lovely. Thank you, darling. Victor, my sweetheart from Vancouver. Nice to see you, honey. He does, he does a lot for the community in Vancouver. Nice to see you, honey. Yeah. So where do we begin? Where do we begin with Auntie Kate? <laughs> Where should we start with her? Can I just actually just start with saying uh, about my first introduction to you in my oh, in, in my life? And I did actually um, I did actually talk about it on uh, I, I wrote about it in the in the video description uh, uh, because it was it was interesting. I my journey I sobered up from um, and well I came into recovery from the life that uh i you know that most of us led back in the 70s and 80s it was survival sex industry and and you know sh showgirl and tiggy and i were in the uh were performance artists in the punk scene on the west coast and uh but it was um there wasn't there wasn't much for us you know 
for people of trans experience. You know, unless you moved to Tuk 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 and never told anybody and you just completely were stealth and you were lucky enough to uh, to be able to do that type of thing. So so anyways, um, when I when all of that finally came crashing down when I could not, you know, take take enough drugs and alcohol to do that stuff anymore and I start, ended up you know, almost dying, you know, from it. And I came into recovery 91 and, uh, and I ended up, uh, leaving a, re um, a recovery house with, uh, a, 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 a woman, a friend of mine, uh, this really cool friend. And we were living in a, in a, uh, in an apartment together and she was an avid reader and she was this uh, she was a really groovy kind of pansexual bisexual she was just she was just really open to everything right and so i disclosed to her that i was um trans transsexual i don't even think the word transgender stuff was really happening then yet or trans and so uh she um she she was like oh wow you could have told me and she goes do you know do you, have you heard of this person and she goes into her room and brings out this book i can't remember what book it was but it was you it was it was a book of yours one of your the it was in the early 90s so was that maybe queer and pleasant gender danger? outlaw probably gender outlaw that's probably it and so i went oh really so i remember taking it to bed and and re reading some of it <laughs> And I took you to bed, honey. And, and I and I started reading it. And all of a sudden, I got really scared. I got really scared because um, here I was. Here I was. Um, I went from you know, uh, you know, punk punk rock, you know, performance art person, and then going into recovery. And and um, in 1991, it was the world wasn't that kind still, you know, even in the big cities. And so I was, I was being quite, I was being quite stealth, like not, you know, advertising my, my stuff and working in the mainstream and I was working in community social work and all that stuff. So I was being quite stealth. And then I'm reading this book and, and here you are, here you are absolutely, uh, just, just, uh, it, you are just blowing up all of these concepts and uh, constructs and all that stuff and I was just like oh my god I was I was in this bubble just just you know you know work eat sleep be good just um you know I don't want to die type of thing it's like you know what I mean I don't want to like have to you know all that stuff and because I was so early in recovery I was um uh you know so fearful but the the thing was is that it planted it it was it was there was some part of what I was reading, what you're reading, that I was that it was so interesting, and I knew that there was truth in there, but I was not quite ready to explore that. And and you know, fast forward 28 years, and it's like it's like oh my god, it's like I'm I'm, I'm it's it's so in the mainstream now. Like you were so cutting, you were so cutting edge back then, and now it's so mainstream and 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 what affected me uh, back then i see uh, uh from me starting my channel um three years ago that that uh i uh, there is a lot of women that are living in stealth still out in the world and um and, and are peeking peeking into uh, these this wonderful youtube and all the stuff that they can uh they, they can uh they can take in and um and start to um start to um explore if you will but i have to say that i think that that for me um that that fear that i had i think still exists a lot in, in um with a lot of um uh the transsexual people that grew up you know uh, living in stealth and stuff and um and I find that, um, and I and I and I find that sad because it it becomes it creates some divisiveness and stuff, you know. So that that's that's where that's where I my introduction with uh, with you were uh, were and like to now now to for to look at it from then to now, it's um, you know I can't. It's like I'm a different person, but I realize how um, how how taboo all those subjects are for a lot of trans uh, trans women I, and and you know from the past and stuff you know
You know what I'm saying? Kind of. I'm yeah. listening. I yeah. Get it. yeah. 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 So that's kind of that was kind of my introduction, and then fast forward to, uh, 29 years later um, to hear you. Here you. Here we are talking, and I'm trying to. Um, I'm trying to have a channel where it's um, where we can talk about all this stuff, right? That it's not just it's not just a transsexual experience. It's not just the trans experience. It's it's all of it. It's and I, I'm and I'm learning as I'm uh, doing this and bringing people on and stuff too. So and I think that's uh, for me. It's always been a, a if you know I I have to stay teachable. I have to um, you know. Um, to feel comfortable, to feel comfortable in the world, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's my little blather at the beginning. <laughs> Not so much blather. Most people, we come into the world and we're told in every possible way that all there is is the body. And the body is sexed. It's sexed male or it's sexed female. And that's the truth we grow up with pretty much everywhere. Um, then we start finding out that man and woman doesn't necessarily equal male and female. And we go, wait, what the fuck is that? And instead of the body, we start focusing on mind and we go, oh, okay. It's not the body. It's the mind. And we, we look into that a little bit further. And then someone says, well, it's all a construct. We made it up at some point. It's a social construct. And if we deconstruct it, it's not there. So there's really no such thing as gender. And we go, Wait, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> and so these are the three ways of looking at gender that, that, that pretty much make up how the, the, the big truths of gender. Gender's in the body, gender's in the mind, or there's no such thing as gender. And the problem is people who believe in one of those truths refuse to accept the other two. Right. And what I'm looking for, what I've been looking for now, you said, you know, my stuff was cutting edge then, and it's uh, it's pretty much, you know, okay, people, you know, understand that there is a lot of the mind present in the idea of gender. Um, but the stuff I'm working on now is really cool. It's how to marry those three ideas together and acknowledge that gender is there to solve problems and depending on what problem we're trying to solve then we get to choose which truth of gender is most applicable at that moment something to do with the body okay sure then yeah there, there there's no such thing as an ironclad binary you, you can't there, there just isn't anywhere in fucking nature right an all or nothing kind of a thing a black or white kind of a thing but by and large male and female yeah okay except for maybe three percent of people who are biologically neither i say three percent like it's a small thing but the number of redheads in the world is about three percent right so that's it's a large percentage of people but by and large when I go into hospital, I want them to know I was assigned male at birth because my physiology is, is that way. So that's where, for me, body is important in terms of gender. Right. But for, for fun, for going day to day, my body doesn't dictate who or what I am. Yeah. Uh, it, it just doesn't. And when it comes down to politics, we do have to acknowledge, if we're trying to solve a political problem, that, nope, gender is a fucking construct. And we can deconstruct it and reconstruct it any way we want to. Again, so depending on what problem we're trying to solve, we can embrace any truth of gender. And the overarching truth of gender that I'm working with right now is that gender is relative. Gender is relative to the problem we're trying to solve. 
And that's kind of fun to play with. Yeah. It, it's not easy. And I run screaming from it. <laughs> <laughs> you too, eh? <laughs> yeah. You know, you want something to hold on to, but who, whoever gets something to hold on to. Exactly. No yeah. Yeah. It's all, it's also transit transitory and impermanent everything is for sure yeah that definitely helps no one wants to hear that <laughs> no no i know i think that's what really freaks people out and i i'm and i found with uh the experience that i found in having having this channel and i we were talking about it before in the uh in the uh when we were doing a sound check that um, like I started at first with just, um, it, it seemed like it was like the transsexual experience because I was just talking from a place of, you know, hey, this is my experience. Is there any other, any, any other people out there? Because I was actually looking for, for, for help from other older transsexuals that, you know, because there was, I, I was tired of, of, uh, teaching a, a, a doctor, you know, and it's like, and always, ha and, and not being, told what what I have to look forward to down the, the down the pike you know type of thing and and um, so I when I started this channel I thought it was a brilliant way to to you know, to find other like-minded or, or people or people that had the, the same physical experience so that you know uh, we could ask each other questions and figure out stuff and not whatnot and then what what I found is that um, everybody from every part of the transi trans transition of the spectrum started coming to the channel and um, and I started learning uh, I started learning so much for myself because I realized that um, that um, you know um, that, that that I wasn't solid like my, my it's all static right like and, and my my um, my my transsexual experience um, I I, ha I broke it down and started to understand like oh yeah it's like that gender fuck stage was like my it was like the non-binary phase that that I was in when I was a kid you know and it's like but there just wasn't words for that back then so no. so but it's funny because but as we, I got older and a lot of other uh, uh, older transsexual friends of mine and stuff we were kind of like. Oh my God! The 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 the, tran the umbrella has holes in it. It's like you know, it's like the P police. You know, look what's happening now. There's P police and all this stuff because of all this stuff coming out. And and at first I was like repelled from it too. But there was something that that made me think, no, no, there's there's more to this than that type of thing. And um, it, this is evolution happening. This is evolution happening. And and you know and it's like oh my god and it's like and we're part of evolution and then it's all, all of a sudden then we don't want evolution to happen you know what i mean it's just <laughs> so weird and i'm like no i want to learn this so uh, i i listened to the young ones that came to the channel and and would said you know marty when you said that that was that was inner transphobia and i was like going oh oh really and i'd look back at it and i was going oh i see that i, I get that where that was coming from because i was you know, like, like I said, I, I got sober and then I was just living in this, you know, trying to survive world type of thing. And, um, and while everything was evolving around me, you know, because and Tiggy and I and all of us were, were evolving like gangbusters and freaking everybody out and right up until I was 28 and 29 until and then all of a sudden it's kind of like I, I, I stopped, stopped evolving or thinking about the whole evolution of the the trans experience or whatever you want to call it type of thing and so i just find it so fascinating and um as it's coming out even more and it's and it and it's and of course it's it had to come out you know ever since the laverne's turning point you know we all knew that there'd be this backlash from this beautiful turning point right and because all of the all of the crap had to come out too and everything and but it's it's starting to settle and we're starting to see you know, um, well, I am anyway, and I think, and, it, <laughs> I, and it's refreshing. And it's refreshing because I, I'm, I really don't want to be that, you know, that narrow-minded because that's part of the problem. Mm. That's part of the problem, especially in our communities. You know, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I, I, I was, go I, I did want to, um, I, I'll take a question too. Uh, if I see a queue happening to guys, I, I honestly, I will, if I see one popping up, um, there probably is tons, but I did want to mention, um, what we were talking about before too, uh, Kate, cause, uh, I, a couple of days ago, I experienced, uh, one of my symptoms of PTSD is like, panic attack or heart stuff that and I ended up in I ended up in uh, urgent care because uh, we didn't know what was going on and and it was just and it was really really scary and I was going oh god not again it hadn't happened in like five years right and and then we talked about uh, having post-traumatic stress disorder and ah. that piece and um, it's uh, uh, and 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 so many of us that come from that experience, uh, come uh, come from our experience, uh, come, uh, come with that uh, post -tra uh, post trauma and, and how it comes out and stuff. And you had mentioned a really neat thing about the body, speech, and mind of it in, when it comes to that context too. Ah, uh, yeah. The, the idea we, when we were talking, we were talking about um, being in a position where you can't say who you are, you can't show who you are, you can't embody who you know yourself to be, that in and of itself is trauma. It's, uh, we're lying, we're, we're, we're not saying who or what we are. And that's trauma, and that will lead to post-traumatic stress. But the experience itself is not comfortable. Mm -hmm. We can get away with stuff, but what I was looking at is like, you know, okay, um, you say you're 58, I'm 72, and I grew up in the 50s, and the word transsexual hadn't even made it into the, the public yet. Um, wow. It didn't come until the early 60s and when um, Christine Jorgensen came right. out um but all i could live i couldn't there was no language for me uh, i didn't really know i you know in my room at night i would you know wrap a towel around me and that was my gown but that was it you know you're a little kid um but i lived in my mind and i enjoyed all of the wonderful things I could be in my mind. And looking back on that, there's this Buddhist principle that there are three kinds of actions. There's action of body, action of speech, and action of mind. And that's pretty much how gender gets around in the world. Um, and we're used to, again, we're thinking of it as, well, if I don't embody it, I can't do gender. Yeah, you can. You can talk about it. You can write about it. Uh, and if you can't even do that, well, you can think about it. Yes. You can start imagining. You can start giving yourself freedom uh, and acknowledging, well, no, I can't go there just yet. I'll probably get beat up which was like most of the places I was going to go when I was a kid. Couldn't do that. Um, when did you start to realize you could mess around and, and have fun with your body and express yourself gender-wise with your body, Ms. Marty? Oh, when I could have fun. Probably, yeah, really young. You know, I'd be walking around the house with the with – Drag, dragging the the blanket around me with my hair in a towel and you know and I had and I was like being Cleopatra and all that stuff you know and it was like but it was it was theater you know so I could hide behind the theater type of stuff and um, because it, I lived I were uh, I, I grew up in Calgary where the Calgary Stampede was right type of thing you know so it was oh, yeah. very redneck but there was the no, young I know Calgary <laughs> oh do you? and there was but but there was the young Canadians of the Calgary Stampede and it was this sing and dance group that would sing after uh, the grandstand the grandstand show afterwards and thank God I my mother put me in that stuff because I knew when I went there and I saw I saw 
man choreographers that were, you know, lighting the loafers and stuff. And, and I thought, oh, it's like, I don't really understand that. But at, at least I know that it's not, you know, that what I see at home isn't, isn't just it. So all I have to do is just, just keep quiet, figure it out and get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so that's what I see. Well, in order to keep, that's the kind of thing we have to understand that these, these are my limitations right now, but they don't always have to be. Right. And getting the idea that they don't always have to be is sometimes hard. It, it gets pretty crushing for, for folks when we're growing up and we're, especially when we're kids. Yes. Yeah. And I, th and I think that, and I think that having that outlet for me was, uh, like kind of like the precursor for for uh being me, me getting the guts to uh, to to like run away like like so young and because it because um that it it started to uh, that being around all of that creative energy and stuff it's like i it, it it really excited me and i wanted more i wanted to figure it out i knew that there i knew that there was possibilities i knew the magic of the theater or that what it we were what was going on there you know, it was, it was, tr it translated in some weird way type of thing. And um, so, because a I have a lot of friends that transitioned later in life and, um, and we always say, you know, it's, it's all relative. Our, our pain, our trauma is, we have the same trauma. It's just, you know, it, it came, it, it comes from different piles, but it's the same crap type of thing, you know? And, <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, because, you know, being a child and having to survive you know, work in the streets and stuff is not a pleasant thing and not too many survived. And then, you know, and then AIDS happened and all that stuff too, right? So it was, it was quite intense. And, um, and I, I remember feeling very, um, yeah, I feel, I, I remember feeling um, kind of resentful at, at people that would transition, you know, after they had their male experience, like the, their adult experience because um and but that was just resentment i had to work through i didn't i didn't understand the the tr the pain and trauma that they how do you through. mean how do you mean um people who transitioned after having their male experience uh, um man, people that uh, man uh are, are transsexual or trans per persons that that had you know lived their life as as a male and got and had a um had a career you know money in the bank all that stuff and then and then transitioned and I remember going through a, like a thank God I was in the program because I had to look at all my resentments if you know what I mean <laughs> it's like and I could see you know you know where it was coming from and then I could act and then I could empathize and actually um, and then uh, when when people like that came into my life that were true it became really good friends um, I saw the trauma that they went through yeah that was kind of that was me minus the career and money in the bank part um when i left high school i got went right into college i had a scholarship into college and i had a scholarship into graduate school doing acting um but then when i i left there um it was frightening to me i didn't i mean i was going to go into theater but then I knew I wasn't a man. What was I going to do? And I ended up traveling across North America looking for the answer to the world's problems. It was the Trans Canada. I went across the old Trans Canada. Oh, did you? Back in the 60s. Oh, cool. And I, up, and I drove down the West Coast and I ended up in San Francisco. But And then came back through um, Denver, Colorado, and I ran into Scientology. I know. Wow. I know. That is amazing. That's where, I, that's where I landed for like 12 fucking years. That was my career prior to and then. I, then coming out of that, I was an adult in my early 30s, an adult guy. And I went, no, can't do this anymore. And boom, went right into transition. And may I say, it's like I... You, you sent me a bunch of pictures to pick from and I saw a picture of that young man and oh my goodness, <laughs> oh my goodness, hubba hubba hubba, 
Haba right? Haba. I was good looking boy. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I was just like, wait, what? Let's see that. I was like, <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Trouble. <laughs> No, that was great. It's funny that you had that experience too, because that's the sad part for me is that I was, I was into all that theater and everything. And I was, uh, when I left, I was in grade 11. And that's when you're um, uh, thinking of colleges and stuff. And I was going to go to uh, U of Berkeley and take uh, television arts and sciences. That's because I was so into it. And because Carol Burnett told me to, I wrote to Carol Burnett as a kid. Aww. I I absolutely Aww. adored her. And she actually wrote me back with the envelope with the embossed lips on it. And and she's and she said, you know, well, if that's what you're interested in, make go to a good, you know, blah blah blah. And so I was said, well, that's what Carol said to do. So that's what I was going to do. But then again, the sad part was is that I I I I I didn't feel it. We didn't. There wasn't the resources like there is today, right? And it's like so I had to go find myself, you know. And to go find yourself back then was, you know, to go find a you know, a kind hooker on Davie Street in Vancouver that would help you along your way type of thing. And then, yeah, so I can empathize with you that. But look at all this amazing stuff that you've done since then. Like you actually did get on, get on to, you got onto Broadway last year, didn't you? A couple of years back, but yes. Yeah. Was it a couple of years now? Yeah. Yeah. And that was, yeah. and it was called, and it was called Straight White Men, right? That's right. That's... I was the one that wasn't. <laughs> that is so cool i wish that yeah. they did they ever were they ever going to film it or anything or no 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 no, no. no that's sacrilege for broadway for sure yeah but i was thought i'd ask if they, if they were gonna make it into a something or whatnot because we can't yeah. see anything right now you know what i mean but how you is that what if you look if you look if you go to tdf.com um, that's the Theater Development Fund. They list all the different shows that are being done and that are streaming. Okay. And for anywhere from 10 to 30 bucks, you get yourself a show that you'd normally have to pay anywhere from 75 to 300 bucks for a Broadway ticket. And if you buy it through tdf.com, it might be tdf.org, I'm not sure theater development fund okay um they the money they make goes into helping kids who want to be in theater Aww. it's all about helping kids who want to be in theater so that's where your money's going and there's real good shows you get to see so and they list them there oh that's so, awesome okay I, I'll I'll actually put it down in the video description below. After I'll get the I'll get the exact uh, uh, the exact website from you or something. If you could tell me later, yeah, Movie. that'd be It'll great. Be. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Oh yeah. So so how was that experience? That was a uh, your it, you finally Broadway. arrived. Yeah. Excuse me, fucking Broadway. <laughs> you know, I I gave up um, when I went through with my first like moment of transition, when I went from male to female, from man to woman, I, I knew I'd never be able to be in theater ever again. Who would ever cast a freak like me? And what you were talking about performance art, I started to write my own shows and okay, I could do that. And I started to tour them and that turned into the text for that became my book. And oh, that's how it started. started. Okay. Yeah. Oh. And then I started more speaking at colleges because the people don't pay very much for 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 theater, you know, solo performance art anymore. Right. Um, but I was being booked into colleges, and after I turned seventy, I started getting all these gigs, including the Broadway gig, including two different movies, including uh, Blacklist on NBC television. They're, all happened after I turned 70. And I'm going, all right, all right. It was worth staying alive for. Oh, that's wonderful. 
Well, right? you were talking about suicide, and mm -hmm. I've I've got a book called Hello Cruel World. Right, and it's a hundred and one alternatives to suicide. Uh, I don't think you can prevent anybody from killing themselves, but you can tell them things to do instead. Yeah, that they might enjoy more, and that's what the book is about. Uh, all the things I used to do instead of killing myself to keep myself alive, and it paid off it did that's yeah. awesome that is Broadway <laughs> and because my name is B for Bornstein I was at the top of the marquee yes starring Kate Bornstein and then the other people but oh my god oh my god I have photos of that that I look at from time to time oh good that's awesome oh I would have I wanted to see that so bad that was so <laughs> good boot. Oh, it sounded like it. How did it go over? It was a show in the summer. And, yeah. And um, it was a wacky show. Uh, it's, it's hard to explain. Yeah. Um, Ty Defoe, who's an um, indigenous trans man in, in the States, and I were cast because we are performance artists we weren't cast for acting okay and we welcomed the audience as they came in and we introduced it and we would move the actors around on stage it was kind of strange and but it was all about masculinity how masculinity itself has become a trap and um, it was it was really smart and sounds like a yeah that stuff needs to be talked about for sure. So, how's everybody in the chat room? Do you, do you want to answer a few questions? Um, Happy to, Auntie Kate. Yeah, let's, sure. Let's see. Any questions you guys have? Um, it uh, if so, I don't have to scroll up scroll up there. Uh, too far if you want to just throw a cue in front of it and copy and paste it again uh, So I could see it that would be great Otherwise, I am going to look and Christy if you could put your uh, Question in there too because unfortunately I forgot to bring my phone in here. Christy had a couple of questions um, For me as well um, Where are you guys? Everybody's having a great conversation Where's all the cues? Blah, blah, blah. Let's see. Hi, Kate. I love listening to you and your beautiful light about love. Aw. Brad. Thanks, Brad. Oh, Atay. Where is everybody? Oh, here we go. Question. What was it like? What was it like uh, evolving in a time period where there was almost no information about being trans or non-binary? How did you find your way? Hmm. Good question. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, it was mostly living in my mind. Um, and I established a pattern for myself of defining myself by what I'm not. I knew I wasn't a man. That was the first thing I knew. It wasn't that I knew I was a woman, but woman was the only other thing. I mean, if you're not a man, you got to be a woman. So, okay, I'm a woman. And so I went through, yes sir, yes sir, three bags full, sir, of the medical cattle shoot to transition physically with surgery and hormones and all of that. And I woke up and I was a woman after surgery. Yay! <laughs> and um, about six months, two years after that, I realized that living like that, I was still being very conscious of this is how I live as a woman, which was how I was living as a man. It was like, it was, it was like acting. And so I said, okay. And there were folks who were telling me, you're not a woman. All right, I'm not a woman. So again, I'm defining myself by what I'm not. 
And that meant I'm not a man and I'm not a woman. There was no word non-binary. Um, <laughs> I wasn't the first one to say that. There were folks in Andy Warhol's factory who were living and calling themselves not men, not women. But those are the words we used. I mean, Jackie Curtis, I believe, right. um, called themselves not man, not woman. And when people asked my gender, I would say not, not man, not woman, which begged the question of what are you? <laughs> uh, and I would just, you'd have to be satisfied with the fact that I'm not a man and I'm not a woman. And to this day, that's the funnest way to express myself. So to answer your question, the only thing I could hang on to for all those years was acknowledging what I wasn't. Mm -hmm. And kind of like, there's that old thing of how do sculptors work while well, you take a piece of rock and you carve away everything that doesn't look like a person. Mm. Uh, you know. Um, and that's been the way I've worked. Um, thanks for asking that. I, I hadn't realized that quite myself. That's awesome. Does, does that answer? Does that answer what you're talking about? If I, I'm sure it did. If it doesn't, yeah, just add on to it in the, in the chat here, hun. I remember when I saw you um, in Victoria, and I remember a, a girlfriend of mine asked me to ask you. Like, what does she identify as? It's like, is she a man? Is she a woman? It's like, and you said, and you said, J tell her I, I identify as, uh, my, identify as little old lady. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Little old lady. Let me explain. Just <laughs> because otherwise, you know, I'm ageist and all kinds of terrible things. <laughs> I'm five foot eight. I was six feet tall, but you know when, when old people get small, small, small? That happened to me. And so I'm little. Uh, for me, I'm little. I'm old. There's no getting around it. 70, I'm old. And I'm not a woman, but I am a lady. My mother taught me how to be a lady. And so I am a little old lady. And I embrace it. I get to walk around uh, New York and go, hello, young man, thank you very much. <laughs> it's a hoot. It's, it's, it's a gender all by itself. It is. That is fantastic. I love it. Uh, Catherine just wants to pop in and say, Catherine's so sweetie, I would just want to say hi to Kate. She's been an inspiration. Hi. Aww. Hello, Catherine. That's awesome. And another question. Nice to see you, Catherine. I'm glad you're doing well. Um, uh, of the people you were with on I Am Kate, who did you find the most interesting to talk to about transgender issues? Jenny Boylan, hands down. Jenny, Jenny Boylan. Jenny Boylan is... A, a brainiac. The smartest, <laughs> smartest person I have ever met. I've met a lot of people. Right. And she has one of the best senses of humor, and she knows something about everything. <laughs> Um, she can burst into song on any subject. Um, and when we spoke about gender, she listened and asked questions. She made her points, but she listened. Um, I got on the bus. I Am Kate was, was, was the Caitlyn Jenner reality show. And it was like seven or eight of us on the bus. I was the only one who identified as non-binary. Everybody else was a woman. And I was going, I don't know how to get along. I don't, I don't speak their language. And we taught each other what it meant. Um, and I finally got it from Jenny, what it meant to be a woman, a trans woman, a woman. And they got it from me, she got it, uh, what it meant to be not man, not woman. And, and that was a wonderful experience. But, but Jen, Jenny, for sure, we still talk. That's still awesome. Touch. 
Yeah, I I got a really good uh, buzz from her and your interaction with when I was watching you two talk. I could really see that there was um, that evolution happening within two with within two people, and that's oh, I just love that when meetings yeah. of the minds like that, and you can just really just get in there and eat each other's brains. <laughs> that's wonderful. Um, any other questions, you guys? Uh, everybody's there's all of this. Uh, Adoration of Auntie Kate in here, but any questions? Um, uh, let's see. Well, we're almost, oh my goodness, we're almost like at, at an hour. I'm going to just um, see. Uh, there, I was going through, I couldn't, uh, you, this, this woman has a Wikipedia page that is very interesting. <laughs> you have, you, you have this. Who are you calling a woman? <laughs> I call them as I see them. <laughs> no. Well, that's okay. 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 Hang on. Um, there's such a thing as gender expression. Yeah. What? How do you like to express yourself? How yeah. How do you like to walk around in the world? I lock, love walking around in the world. As a woman, yeah. As a lady, yeah. As a girl, uh, as cute, um, adorable—all of those words. I love that. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't mean I am a woman. Right. And and that's okay. I I, it, I didn't think it was for a long time, but finally now I give myself permission. Um, I uh, wrote a book called Gender Outlaw, and there was a big hue and cry as soon as the internet popped up what oh, yeah, gender outlaw she looks like a woman what what what's outlaw about that <laughs> no read the black and find <laughs> read the black and then we'll talk yeah <laughs> that's amazing no i find it so interesting too this uh since i've been talking about like i've never talked about trans stuff so much in my life in the last like three years since <laughs> since I've, I've been landed on vancouver island from vancouver and stuff and um and um because and i started think i started posing these questions to myself like if i if I was, you know, if I was 20 years old and I was in a big city, you know, and I would definitely would be exploring because because there was you, there was you couldn't you couldn't explore when I was a kid. It was either you 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 got your nose, you got your tatas, you got your hoo ha and then you, you know, got pushed out of the nest and 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 you just tried not to try not to get killed. You know what I mean? And 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 it's like I missed all of this fun stuff, you know, I, that that you couldn't do back then, you know. And and so when I see all these, uh, when I see all these kids, see I'm sound, sounding older now too. I see all these all these kids that are, you know, are 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 playing with gender and and breaking those boundaries and doing all the stuff that you write about and stuff. Um, at first, it kind of freaked me out, but then I thought, oh my god, I'm. Or, or, or I had that aversion and whenever I have some aversion, I know that there's something there that I have to look at. And it's because I was jealous that I could not have had that experience when I was a kid playing with yeah. all that, you know, yeah. and being able to be able to go to, you know, go from high school to theater school and, and be this gender fuck little, you know, non-binary, whatever, as I'm figuring it out, like, oh my God, it's... Uh, when I see kids doing it now, you know, in, in school, I just, it, it just makes my heart sing to think that, you know, that, that that's possible, that they're actually, yes. they're actually doing it. Oh my God. And you actually tell these, I, I have all the, like Chloe, Chloe from the Chloe Connection. She's this brainiac that's going to be another Jenny Boylan for sure. Like she's really neat. Like she's, and she's totally, um, uh, oh God, you just love her. And, um. Uh, oh my God! Now I just totally got sidetracked <laughs> with what I was talking about. But um, what were we saying? We were we were talking about. It was talking about. Uh, you were talking about how you would really, you know, you look at the, how kids are today and able to do this. That's and, it. And, that's it. And and I she, think that it it it's incumbent upon each of us to make the world a little bit safer, so that the next 
next generation can do whatever it was that you wanted to do and you thought you couldn't. That's and, what it, that's what we did. Okay. That yeah. makes me feel better. That little bit of resentment that was still in there. <laughs> it's like, you know, really needed to hear that. <laughs> because when I do talk to Chloe and stuff and I see them taking their, you know, uh, doctorate in, in psychology and she's like, she's not even 30 and she's um, uh, doing all uh, do doing all this this amazing material on YouTube that she's starting out. And I've had her on uh, on the show and and I keep telling her, oh, my God, it's so amazing that you can do this. Oh, my God. It's like you're in university. Oh, my God. It's like you could. It's like and she's like looking at me like, yeah, yeah, of course. It's like, you know what I mean? And it's like, but I'm going, oh, my it's it's mind blowing to think that, you know, because, you know, we couldn't back then. No. I'm, sure, I'm sure there was I'm sure there's the exceptions that will, you know, hit me in the DMs or something. But, you know, it's very it was very rare for sure. Yeah. So any more questions before um, we can, um, we have to say Sarina. Uh, Serena, my beautiful Serena Mink, the, the electrologist supreme of uh, San Diego. Hello, darling. Can you tell us a little bit of, about your experience with Candace and Jenner, Jennifer Bond? Oh, well, she just did. Well, so who is Candace? Oh, Candace. Oh, my God. Candace Kane. Oh, Kane. Yes, of course. Yes. Um, what a darling. Um, she identifies as a children. And Aww. there's a whole other gender. Um, and I learned that about her. She's... That's a new one. I like that. Well, yeah, right? And, you know, we were traveling. I, I forget where we were. We were someplace in the upper Midwest, um, outside, west of Chicago, west of Illinois. And we were going to go to a drag show. There was a drag friend of hers uh, that we were going to go see. And you could see this in one of the episodes. And she explained to us of yeah okay she's trans she's transsexual but she's a certain kind of transsexual she's a showgirl and she, that explained you know she could flip her hair you know she was just fabulous she does the high kicks she she's a showgirl yeah. and she taught me all about that and we we bonded on living a gender that wasn't quite understood by other people that's beautiful i love that i love that as, as far as caitlin and i caitlin and i bonded on being gentlemen we, we <laughs> when we were men we were gentlemen right that was that was how we lived you right we were a gentleman yeah and um so we would make each other laugh with that one <laughs> that's great i love it Isadora has a, a good one here too. Was there a lot of black backlash when Gender Outlaw came out? I remember seeing a debate on TV in the 90s with you and two trans women uh, on the Roseanne show. Sophia Lamar, yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I was getting shit from all different kinds of sizes. Uh, there was the beginnings of a transsexual rights movement going on. And they were demanding inclusion in spaces, women-only spaces. And I was saying, well, you know, uh, you don't get to push your way in. That's a very manly thing to be doing. And as far as calling yourself, and then on the other side, you'd say, okay, you say you're women only, it's up to you to define what's a woman, and how are you going to do that? And so both sides were, you know, just rah, 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 on me, and I was going, oh, fuck, a plague on both your houses. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, there was a lot of problems when the book came out. Interestingly enough, um, I've, I've been able to 
update that book. It's now it's now in its second edition, like about four four or five years ago. I basically rewrote it from scratch. Um, all this talk about how bad the binary was, you know, oh, can't have this binary thinking. And in the first edition of the book, I laid in another binary, which in today's language, I was saying non-binary gender is good, binary gender is bad. You know, you can't be, there's no such thing as a real man. There's no such thing as a real woman. And yes, there is. Of course there is. Right. That's not the only option is the, is the, is the difference. And it was so important for me to be right that I wasn't able to be inclusive. And over time, I've been able to see that. And thank goodness I was able to update the book. So, right. yeah, there was, there was problems when Gender Outlaw first came out. Uh, a lot of trans women were very upset with me. Well, you know, uh, new stuff always does cause cause stuff, and it's so, and it's wonderful. This this new revised edition that that is out. You said you basically had to start it from scratch again. Really? I okay. I've got to yeah, get that. Yeah, I got to yeah. get that I mean, one. The, well, it's a lot. Bunch of it is the same, but uh, no, there were huge sections. I had to just go. Nope, that doesn't work anymore. Yeah, because yeah, so, because the evolution of stuff. It's like we're all evolving. We're all growing. We're all learning as we're going along. You know, all of us. For example, I was, I defined the parts of gender as gender identity, gender assignment, gender role, <clears throat> gender expression, this sort of thing. And now, and I didn't get it, if I were to write it again, I would say, no, 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 the parts of gender um, that I think are most universal uh, is body and mind in space-time. The other stuff, gender identity, gender assignment, gender roles, this is all gender in a public space. This is how gender... <clears throat> is enforced in a public space. Gender attribution, you have to decide when you first meet a person, what's their gender. Um, gender expression has to match up with a person's gender identity. Gender identity, only two of them are valid. and That's all public space of gender. But in a private space of gender, what really matters is your body, your mind, and the fact that you're in space and time. And that last part is real important because that's the part that understands that you're changing all the time. Mm. That's the part that allows you to welcome the idea of being a little old lady mm -hmm. because time. <laughs> that's beautiful. I love that. Yeah. Are you like, fun. are you like, is that, are you scribbling about stuff like that right now? Yeah. I, I stopped about a month ago because I, I, I just, I live in the States and the States is a mess. Mm. America is, you know, words fail me. And if you live south of the border right now, if you're in the United States of America and you're able to vote, Please vote. And if you've already voted, please get friends to vote. Oh, oh, oh. Um, I'm yes. waiting to see the outcome of this election. And depending on the outcome of election, the election, I'll have a... I'm hoping I'll have some context to write a new book about gender. Right. What world am I writing it for? Is it going to be more of Trump's world? Right. Maybe that's one way to write about gender and the need for gender. Is it going to be a world that's recovering from Trump's world and is fighting back? 
that's another way to write about gender. Mm -hmm. In any case, the bitter, bitter fighting that's going on uh, isn't just political. It isn't just economical. In in the world of gender, we we fight trans women fight with what we're, what we're calling trans excluding radical feminists mm -hmm. gender critical uh feminists and the fight is it's ugly it's mm -hmm. people really that's mean a, to each other and yeah that's gotta stop yeah that, that doesn't get anybody anywhere it's not going to resolve anything no and so how do i write that and i want to see what happens with this election before i scribble yeah the Under next opus understandable yeah well and whichever way it turns out i'm sure it will it will add to the um discourse in a in a in a positive way or in a way that will help us for sure um, can I tell you the title of the new book? Yes, you I'm can. Looking? Yes, please. Okay. It's called Gender, Just for the Fun of It. <laughs> I love it. And then, because that's going to piss people off. And so I've got a <laughs> subtitle that'll make those people happy. It's called Compassionate Gender Strategies for Divisive Times. Aw. Nice. You're always really good at those taglines. That's that's good. God, if anybody hasn't been to her last, I think it was three years ago. It's like when you were handing out those get hell get uh, get out of hell get out of oh, hell free, free card. card. What what was the premise behind? Maybe we can like uh, wrap it up with that. It's oh. like what was that? It was so beautiful. Is there a way I can upload a? a... A file to the chat room or can I send you a file and so that we can read it yeah so you can have the card a copy of the card oh, yeah yeah or, if you if yeah. you if you put it in the um, if you just send it to uh, uh, text me text it to me uh, I can throw it on the screen easier said than done hang on <laughs> <laughs> Shit. if you go into well, I wrote this book called Hello, Cruel World, 101 Alternatives to Suicide for Teens, Freaks, yeah. and Other Outlaws. And it's not a suicide prevention book, but it does speak to the idea of, of killing yourself. Um, because I've been suicidal that I know of and remember really like approached that edge six times in my life and hang on i said to marty aspen stone says i still have my card from the 90s <laughs> oh good don't pass it out yet marty i'll tell you tell you when okay you can, but you've got it now okay and the whole premise of the book it There's no rules. Uh, there's no way that you can force someone to stay alive. There's no way you can force someone not to kill themselves. But you can say there are other things to do that might give you more of a fun time. You can make your life a little bit better. You always can do that. Always possible to make your life better. Not completely good. No one's life is going to be completely good. Not ever is always going to be something to complain about um but it comes down to this you get to do whatever you want to do to make your life more worth living period full stop anything you want to do you get to do there's only one rule that makes that blanket permission possible. Only one rule in the book, and I'm so proud of that. Don't be mean. It's the only rule. Uh, if you're not being mean, you can do whatever the 
fuck you want to do. You can do whatever you want to do with gender. You can do whatever you want to do with sex. As long as you're not mean. You want to be mean to yourself? Okay, if that's part of it, yeah, I'm sorry. I was mean to myself for years and years and years. But, oh well. But the problem with that kind of blanket permission when it comes to sex and gender is that it will get you in trouble with God. Most religions, when it comes to sex and gender, in their canon, go, no, 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 you're going to hell. And to solve that, I've got this little card that Marty's going to send out to the chat now. It's a get out of hell free card. And here's how it works. It didn't come you through. Visualize. It didn't it's come. In your... It's in the, it's in the yeah. chat. I know. I was like waiting for fuck, it. To... Fuck, fuck, fuck. Yeah, fuck a duck. Hang on. <laughs> Such a big, wonderful chat. No, it didn't come through. <laughs> well, here you, you get. Imagine a get out of hell free card, like the get out of jail free card in Monopoly. Right. Let me see if I can do this. Oh, I can't even share my screen on this app. All right. Um. I will send it to. Try one more time sending it. The deal yeah. is. You live your life any, doing anything you need to do to make your life more worth living. You just don't be mean. And if you get sent to hell for something that was not mean to anybody, you hang on to the card, in this case, in your imagination. That would yeah. work just fine. And there you wake up in hell and you go, well, thanks, Kate. That was real good fucking advice. Give the card to Satan. Yeah. Big, big fella. <laughs> and I will do your time for you. Aww. That's the deal I made with the devil. Aww. And that's how. Hang on. There we go. To go. Did you get it yet? Let's see. For some reason, it won't go through. I don't know why. Marty. I know. <gasps> this is it. This is it. Oh, there it is. Got it. Uh -huh. okay. I got it. Okay. So, okay, Marty will give you this get out of hell free card. There it is. It's right here, you kids. It on your phone. Yep, there it is. Um, <laughs> and that's how it works. You, you, have great sex, have fun with gender, just don't be mean, and if you get sent to hell for any of it, and you weren't mean, I will do your time for you. Don't worry, because I'm big time into BDSM. I'm a uh, piggy bottom. I'll have a ball. <laughs> Everybody wins. That's great. Oh my god. Okay. Thank you for helping me get out of hell. <laughs> Honey, oh my God, I just absolutely love you. Isn't it? This was fantastic. What a wonderful time. Thank you so much for uh, spending some of your Sunday with me and, and uh, talking it out. This has been great. It's been so great. Okay. Yeah, yeah. For those of you in Canada, don't let anyone like Trump get into office. No, it's... Just don't. It's like whack-a-mole here. It's like they're they're trying. They're trying. It's like there there was this uh, uh, really right-wing uh, uh, party that popped up because they didn't get the they didn't get the um, uh, leadership of the conservative party. So he went and did his own thing, and that was the last federal election. And they had ones in every riding, and they were anti-immigration. They're anti everything out of the Trump playbook. Not one uh, ride. They didn't get one seat in the house. Every it got. It, they were all gone. But it started the conversation. You know, yeah. which yeah. Uh, so I'm. So we're we're praying for you guys up up 
up here sending <gasps> sending you all good vibes the white witches of the north are sending their their to, there's snow and they're all the cool weather to just cool it the fuck down and let's get this get let's get this party back on track and um yeah i do believe it'll happen i do believe i do believe it yeah but we'll all keep right in, we'll thank keep you in, for having me on my dear thank you honey and you uh we'll keep in touch uh I'd love that, and um, me too. And big, big um, hubs to, for hugs anybody, to you and you Barb. Can, you can follow me Barbara. on Twitter if you want to get in touch with me. I was going to ask you that. Get in touch with, yeah, uh, Kate Bornstein at Kate Bornstein. At Clint, is how Kate. you can reach me on Twitter, and I do answer people who tweet me. She does. She does. I know. I know. Right. Awesome. So right. you and Barbara have a wonderful rest of your night. Thank, thank, thank her for me. Uh, from me that I could steal you for a couple hours today. Thank her. <laughs> mm, kisses to her too. Yeah, I can't yes. can't wait to meet you all when this the, when the plague is over and we can um, we can um, play around again. Graham, Graham, Graham and I are planning to do walk the Camino. So uh, the Camino oh, in Spain, and it's like, and I'd love to stop in New York and, and say hi to some people. And you're definitely one of the people I'd love to see on the way there. Yeah, it's important. We have to do it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Love you, girl. Nighty night. Nighty you. night. Okay. Love to all. Thank you for coming in. And I'm just going to wrap up here on the in the chat and stuff. So I'm going to let you go and uh, go on with your night. Thank you so much for taking the time, Kate. Really, I really appreciate it. And, and, um, uh, yeah, you've just, you just filled my heart and healed my heart as usual. Thank you. Back at you. Bye. Love, bye. love you, girl. Oh my God. That was so fantastic. Hi everybody. I want to thank everybody for coming on, uh, and, joining me on the live. I will put this up taped. Um, wasn't she wonderful? Yes, she's on the East Coast, so it's it's pretty late there. So um, we couldn't go till my regular 6.30. Uh, but we got, we got an hour and 19 minutes of her. That was wonderful. Yeah, we were blessed with, yeah, we are blessed with all of her efforts today. Absolutely. Thank you, Auntie Kate, if you're still watching. Thank you. That is one impressive, powerful little lady. That's true. This discussion was really fun. Thanks for holding. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, much love to you too, Regina. I'll talk to you soon this week. Um, Casey. Thank you, Casey and everybody. Christy, sorry I didn't get all the questions. I couldn't believe it. I had the phone in the other room and I couldn't, I couldn't get to, to the rest of your questions. It was so wonderful. Um, oh, thank you, thank you, Regina, and Unique. Hello, Unique. Oh, I had a friend named Unique back in the '80s. Hi, darling. Happy Halloween. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Ghislaine, everybody. I think I can actually come into the chat room with you guys. Do I have it? Oh, I do have it set up. Good. There I am. Here we go. And all of you beautiful people in the chat room, you have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Brianna, for coming in and taking, um, taking a wrench and helping out. And Casey and Christy. And Steven, nice to see you. Serena, my darling, thank you for coming in. One of these days I'm going to blow dry my hair before I start. This is just wet and wild and go. So anyways, just to let you know, next week I'm going to have um, Velvet Steel with on, us uh, on again. Um, we're uh, going to be doing a show a month. And uh, this uh, next week we're going to be talking about sex. Yes, we're going to be talking about sex and the trans experience and we got a lot of things to unpack and talk about so join us next week for that and at the end of the month i'm going to have a few of uh a few of the gals from other channels on and we're going to have a have a fun chat i can have four people on so uh stick around uh our q 
keep your notification bells on for that to find out who's going to be on the the end of the month live we're going to have a group live and have some fun because that halloween show was so much fun i loved it doing it if you haven't watched it check it out Brittany d was on regina chloe and um uh and brianna was on too my little unicorn yeah it was a lot of fun and uh, hopefully the audio is ironed out. It's supposed to be, so it's a better experience. Uh, so if you do want to watch that Halloween show tonight, um, skip over to about 16 minutes, then the audio is fine. Anyways, I love you guys. Um, thank you so much for being parts of my life and um, uh, being a big part of my life uh, with this channel and evolving and growing with you. It's been wonderful. Um, Good night, Victor, and everybody else. You stay safe. I love you. And um, remember to like and subscribe uh, uh, to this channel and like this video. And like all the videos, if you like them. And um, keep, like I said, keep that notification bell on because I'm going to have some more groovy stuff in, uh, in the near future for you. Uh, you're welcome, Casey. Nice to see you. And... Thank you for, and everybody, uh, Conversations with Regina is continuing our Wednesday show. She's doing it um, uh, by herself. Uh, she's having a live stream and a real interactive with the chat. So uh, please join her and support her on Wednesdays at noon. Um, and otherwise, that's about, the, that's about it for now. I'm really tired. It was quite the exhausting few days after having that. Um, arrhythmia tachycardia attack and uh, thank you for all the support if you follow me on social media i did post it in um in facebook and uh thank you for all your love and support while i figure out this heart issue what's going on um yeah i love i love being in the chat room with these guys it's so neat um you're welcome martin thank you honey yeah she was wonderful it just blew me away Okay, so I'm going to go and I'm going to say goodbye as always uh, with Qualicum Beach where I live and a little um, blessing for you. So you be well, stay safe, wear those masks and fingers crossed for Tuesday. Hopefully all of this bullshit will be over and um, we can start healing again. Okay, so think, think good thoughts, think, think good thoughts and it will happen. It will happen. Let's move forward together. Okay. Love you guys. Bye from Vancouver Island. I love you. Thank you, Auntie Kate. May you have peace. May you have ease of well-being. May you have perfect health. Mm, breathe. Breathe. Hi, from the west coast of Vancouver, of Canada, <laughs> Vancouver Island. <laughs>